I'll start off by introducing myself. My name is Tom Necker. I uh, used to work at the Franklin Institute of Science Museum in Philadelphia, where this machine was located from the 1930s through about 2000. Um, I did not run it in the 1930s. Just to be clear about this, I did not have a useful machine. Uh, I started at the Franklin Institute when I was about 14 years old, and I think I would probably about 80, 84, 1984. Um, so this machine is on loan to the National Museum of Industrial History from the Franklin Institute. Um, this is, as far as we know, the world's smallest fully operational paper machine. Uh, Frank, you did great over here. This, <laughs> the only reason it's fully operational is because of Frank. Yay! Or else it would just be sitting here as a pretty object that you'd be looking at. Um, there's one other machine that they found out in Ohio, mm -hmm. um, but they don't actually run it and make paper on it. They just run it so you can see it moving, but they don't actually make paper on it. Probably because it's too complicated. <laughs> too messy. Yeah, too messy. They don't even have the Kind of pump or any of that, that's all separate. So, before I get started, I'm going to find out what you guys actually know. Do any of you know who or what first made paper? Did you guess? Like Egyptians use like pirates. Egyptians? That's one. That's, that's Anything else? Anyone else? Want to take a guess? What? I said the same thing. Same thing? It's not great. Egyptians. Anybody from the Chinese? Chinese? Well, neither of them are actually correct. Paper was first made by paper wasps. Because the question was specifically who or what first made. Now, the Egyptians didn't actually make paper. They would actually use papyrus, which is a reed that grows in the Nile Valley. And you dry it out, you unroll it and dry it out. And then you can actually write on it. The Chinese were probably the first ones to technically make paper as far as people. And from what Chinese lore tells us is the inspiration for paper making came from paper wasps. And the process for making paper isn't too much different than what the wasp uses. The wasp, if you've ever watched one around your picnic, will be chewing on a picnic table that doesn't have a good finish on it or any wood that's exposed. They basically chew on that wood, they pulp it, and then they take it back to the nest and they spit it out, forming the paper. The machine uses basically the same parts and processes, and when we get to the machine, I'll show you how they're very similar. But I'll pull this slowly out of the water, and as I pull it up out of the water, I'm going to shake it back and forth and up and down. That shaking process helps those fibers settle in and lock together. There's some uh, absolutely wonderful videos of watching people that are professional paper makers make handmade paper on YouTube. Um, there's even a video of some uh, factory in China where they're making a giant sheet of handmade paper that's bigger, I think it's about the size of this room, one sheet at a time, and there's like 30 guys around this giant frame that's suspended above the ceiling that they're shaping. I, I could never imagine doing that, but it's, it's a wonderful video to watch. So when I take my frame off, my decal, you can see I still have kind of a sharp edge in my paper, but I really don't have paper now. I just have slop. To get the slop off the screen and closer to being paper requires kind of a, a maneuver, which is your vocabulary word for the day. It's called coochie. Say coochie? Coochie. As my friend Maggie 
uh, told me coochie is a French word, which is what? To lay. So we are going to lay the paper onto a piece of felt. It's kind of more of a back and forth squishy procedure. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Ah. Try to give it some help. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't want to cooch. Well, at least I got it somewhat drier. Here's the sheet of paper I made this morning at 11 a.m. Uh, that's drying. And here's a piece of paper I made two weeks ago. You guys can pass around. You can see that handmade paper has, it gets a lot of air in between the fibers if you let it air dry, and it kind of poofs up. Um, to keep that from happening, a handmade paper person will actually make a piece of paper on one piece of felt, put the next felt on top, make another piece of paper, keep that process until they have 50, 60 sheets. They'll stick it into a big metal press. They'll screw the press to squeeze out the water, as much water as they can get out of it. They'll take it out of the press, and it will be much more easily handled than what I just pulled off. And then from there, they either hang it to dry or they throw it on a wall. And once it's on a wall, they can, as it gets closer to drying to this stage, they actually kind of rub out the air to flatten it out. There's even some people that will actually run it through a heater or like an iron to totally dry out the paper. Um, and there are handmade paper dryers where they stack up the paper in felts and then they run air through it until the, uh, the paper is actually dry. That is so cool. It's a brilliant game. Big point of always making paper is to keep those fibers evenly distributed throughout the water so that you don't have weird spots in your paper. Some places thinner, some paper places thicker. From here, it's going to get poured into what's called the head box. The head box has what looks like popsicle sticks that keep agitating those fibers in the paper before they finally pour onto this yellow thing. This yellow thing is actually a screen just like this screen. The only difference is, is instead of being put on a frame, it's one continuous screen that can keep rolling around in circles. On either side of that screen, there's these rubber things, which are called decals. They do the same job as this decal. They give the paper a straight edge, but only on the two sides because we're actually making one long continuous roll. Yeah. 